to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Thursday, November 7th, 2013, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here is a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight. Obamacare by morning. Over six people serve. Country star spoof Obamacare. And a world-famous artist showcases anti-NWO art. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I've got every right to, to destroy the image of the so-called emperor, and I'll do it any time I please. Why is it spinning? Oh, it does that. Okay. Why is it smoking? Um, I don't... Maybe, maybe we should restart it. Obamacare by morning. That was Carrie Underwood and Brad Paisley at last night's Country Music Awards. The two were on a rant about the faulty Obamacare website because Paisley injured himself twerking. But judging by the way those two were making fun of Obamacare, I guess they weren't paid off by the Affordable Care Act's PR team because the rest of Hollywood has been targeted to include Obamacare in its plotline. The California Endowment is a private foundation spending millions to promote Obamacare. They recently provided a $500,000 grant to ensure TV writers and producers can stitch the Affordable Care Act into plot lines watched by millions. The center that received the grant said, we know from research that when people watch entertainment television, if they know it's fiction, they still tend to believe that that stuff is actually factual. People learn from these shows. Well, it may be a little too late to use entertainment pop culture to fix this political glitch, but Maybe that's why Obama has been on the road on the Obamacare defense team. He was here in Dallas yesterday. One of the things that sometimes gets me a, a little frustrated, although I understand it because I'm in politics, um, is folks who are complaining about how the website's not working. The first month I've not been happy with them. Uh, you've all heard about the website woes. Nothing drives me more crazy uh, than the fact that right now there's great insurance to be had out there, choice and competition, where people can save money for a better product, except too many folks haven't been able to get through the website. Now. This is like having a, a really good product in a store and the cash registers don't work and there aren't enough parking spots and nobody can get through the door. And so we are working overtime to get this fixed. Well, when people begin to receive the level of care that they're going to experience under the Affordable Care Act, Obama might just need to hit the propaganda trail once again. Now, we already know that doctors and a lot of hospitals are refusing to see Obamacare patients. But for those that do get to see a doctor, their visits may be even more efficient thanks to human health services. Take an extended family member of Alex Jones who was mistakenly prescribed pre-diabetic medication without a confirming test. This was all because the 90-year-old woman's blood tests were off since she'd eaten the morning of her blood draw. She told the doctors this and the lab technicians, but due to the health service computers, she was given the prescription based on the computer-generated protocol. Now, the move toward greater efficiency in healthcare delivery in a mandated system means that people are gonna get, get seen less often, they'll be seen for a shorter period of time, and they're often given medication rather than physical therapy or psychological or behavior modification through teaching better diet and behavior. So welcome to socialized healthcare. But don't take my word for it. One of the traditional methods of imposing statism or socialism on a people has been by way of medicine. It's very easy to disguise a medical program as a humanitarian project. Most people are a little reluctant to oppose anything that suggests medical care for people who possibly can't afford it. James Madison, in 1788, speaking to the Virginia Convention, said, Since the general civilization of mankind, I believe there are more instances of the abridgment of the freedom of the people by gradual and silent encroachment of those in power than by violent and sudden usurpations. The doctor begins to lose freedoms. It's like telling a lie, and one leads to another. 
First, you decide that the doctor can have so many patients, they're equally divided among the various doctors by the government. But then the doctors aren't equally divided geographically. So a doctor decides he wants to practice in one town, and the government has to say to him, you can't live in that town, they already have enough doctors, you have to go someplace else. And from here, it's only a short step to dictating where he will go. This is a freedom that I wonder whether any of us have the right to take from any human being. Take it into your own occupation or that of your husband. All of us can see what happens once you establish the precedent that the government can determine a man's working place and his working methods, determine his employment. From here, it's a short step to all the rest of socialism to determining his pay. And pretty soon, your son won't decide when he's in school where he will go or what he will do for a living. He will wait for the government to tell him where he will go to work and what he will do. Well, in a move that could prevent 20,000 heart attacks and 7,000 deaths a year, the FDA is banning trans fats. The FDA announced Thursday that it will require the food industry to gradually phase out artificial trans fats, saying they are a threat to people's health and especially the heart. Trans fats are used in both processed foods and in restaurants, often to improve the texture, shelf life, or flavor of foods. And to phase them out, the FDA said it had made a preliminary determination that trans fats no longer fall in the agency's generally recognized as safe category, which is reserved for thousands of additives that manufacturers can add to foods without FDA review. Now, the FDA's Deputy Commissioner for Foods, Michael Taylor, said, we want to do it in a way that doesn't unduly disrupt markets. Yes, that's the same Michael Taylor that's formerly of Monsanto. The FDA officials say they have been working on trans fats issues for around 15 years, and their first goal was to label them. Ah, so could this be why there is an extended effort to not label GMOs? It's because Michael Taylor and the rest of the guys there over at the FDA know that once they're labeled, they're going to be phased out. But never fear, if GMOs do destroy DNA and create all kinds of hereditary problems down the line for future generations, there is a jaw-dropping breakthrough in genetics that might fix that. For the first time, scientists are able to engineer any part of the human genome with extreme precision by using a revolutionary new technique called CRISPR which has been likened to editing the individual letters on any chosen page of an encyclopedia without creating spelling mistakes. The landmark development means it is now possible to make the most accurate and detailed alterations to any specific position on the DNA of the 23 pairs of human chromosomes without introducing unintended mutations or flaws. The technique is so accurate that scientists believe it will soon be used to treat incurable viruses such as HIV or currently untreatable genetic disorders. It might also be used controversially to correct gene defects in human IVF embryos. Now many people think that messing with the DNA is just one step toward eugenics whereby they're going to get rid of the undesirables and their undesirable traits. Well, surprisingly, this move toward population reduction has been met with rounds of applause. Which so-called dangerous idea do you each think would have the greatest potential to change the world for the better if it were implemented? Dan, let's start with you. Oh, oh my God. One. That's, you gotta give us a minute to think about that. <laughs> uh, population control, there's too many goddamn people on the planet. <laughs> and I don't know if that's a... You know, I'm, uh, I'm pro-choice. I believe that women should have the right to control their bodies. Sometimes in my darker moments, I'm anti-choice. I think abortion should be mandatory for about 30 years. <laughs> With more on that is Paul Joseph Watson. That's right, Leanne. And think about it this way. Imagine if a prominent anti-abortion activist had called for all homosexuals to be killed. Just imagine the level of outrage that that would cause. And yet Dan Savage, so far at least, has basically been given a free pass. Note how the audience enthusiastically applauded his advocacy for forced population reduction. If they're so eager to see it happen, how about they put themselves and their children first in line for the culling? You know that's not going to happen. But Savage is only advocating the same concept that current White House science advisor John P. Holdren 
promoted in his 1977 book, Ecoscience, forced abortions of the type ruthlessly imposed by the communist Chinese government. We've all seen the stories, women being kidnapped off the streets, out of their own beds, beaten up, dragged to state clinics, forcibly injected with abortion-inducing drugs, the babies forcibly aborted, thrown in a bucket. That's the kind of policy being advocated here. But aside from the moral outrage, Savage's argument is based on the debunked myth of overpopulation. Half the world is already below the 1, the 2.1 fertility replacement rate. Virtually all major European countries are well below it, as is America. We're actually not having enough children to replace ourselves at the current rate as it is. According to the UN's own figures, population will peak at around 9 billion in 30 to 40 years and drastically decline soon after. This demographic transition, which is what they refer to it as, actually means that the real threat facing humanity by the end of the century will be underpopulation, not overpopulation. So Savage's advocacy for mandatory abortion is not only morally repugnant, it's based on the completely fraudulent premise of overpopulation, which is a conspiracy theory constantly invoked by the Malthusian and eugenicist-driven establishment, as well as people like Ted Turner, who's got five kids but says that the one-child policy should be imposed worldwide, to attack our fertility rights and eviscerate our quality of life as they pursue their post-industrial revolution, which at its heart lay the debunked myth, the religion, the pseudoscience of overpopulation. Now back to Leanne McAdoo in the InfoWars studios. Well, there you go. Overpopulation is just a conspiracy theory. So get out there and make some more freedom fighters for our army of truth. You got about three minutes during this break. But when we get back, I am going to tell you how you can win $10,000 fighting tyranny. And then we'll have a very special interview with world-renowned artist Anthony Frieda. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Welcome back. 
An Arkansas cop tasered a woman for refusing to show him her breasts. Ashley Bennett alleges that a uniformed officer, Brandon Carter, strutted into her place of work in 2011 and ordered that she give him a sneak peek of her bosom. When she declined, he reportedly then chased her around the building before zapping her repeatedly with his electroshock gun. You know what, buddy? There are facilities for creeps like you, and you don't even have to whip out your taser. You just got to pay a cover. But here, we can't even trust these cops to use their tasers or their guns properly. Now we want to arm the TSA, who has absolutely no training, and then disarm all Americans. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. Well, as the noose tightens on gun laws, gun manufacturers are packing up and moving out. In New York in particular, the SAFE Act has caused several gun companies to want to just pull up roots and relocate. American Tactical Imports announced it would be leaving New York and investing in a new facility in South Carolina. Car Arms is relocating to Pennsylvania, and Remington is scouting Tennessee as a possible home. In Colorado, Magpul put up a substantial fight, taking the Second Amendment battle to the Senate, but it looks like they may have to relocate. Magpul made the announcement in February in response to new gun restrictions in the state. Connecticut-based Colt Manufacturing, which manufactures AR-15-style rifles and various firearms, decided earlier this year to announce its relocation to Texas. And following in their footsteps, PTR plans to abandon Connecticut for the same reasons. In California, the LAPD doesn't have enough crime to fight, so they're requiring ammo sellers to provide electronic statements of their sales. Because, of course, rifling through paper is just too much trouble. Talk about Big Brother. They say it'll be more convenient for them because the way we do it now is we have to go out and manually look at the logs, and it's a nightmare. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer, in a report to the committee, noted there's a chance the city could be sued over the program, with the legal argument being that the city is preempted from enacting a measure that is now governed by state law. You think? He never asked about the people's Second Amendment rights. No, just simply, will we get caught and get sued? I'm G. Giornetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. And that's in addition to them tracking the ammo sales. They're tracking any ammunition that you buy online. The U.S. Post Office has to make a note of any ammunitions that they deliver to your house. They're also shutting down uh, the last lead smelters that are operating in the U.S. of A. So if you've got them, hang on to them because your bullets are going to be worth their weight in gold. Now stick around because up next we have an interview with world-renowned artist Anthony Frieda. And then stay with us after that interview because Alex Jones has a very special message for all of you active filmmakers who are looking to make an extra 10 grand fighting tyranny. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. 
Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Well, joining us today is Anthony Frieda, an illustrator who has produced some very thought-provoking art. It's political, but it makes you think. And he's done illustrations for Time, The New Yorker, Rolling Stone, Esquire, Business Week, Playboy, New York Times, you name it. He's been out there, and he's got some interesting stories to tell us about not only how he came to his art, came to his political views, but also about censorship that he's encountered along the way. Anthony, welcome. So great to have you here. Great to and be you've here. You've been in on the war on terror. You spotted that early on, and you had a lot to say about that with your pictures. And I say you had a lot to say about it because, you know, the tired adage that a picture is worth a thousand words, but you can really zoom in on the essence of an issue the way you do these illustrations. It's amazing. But you've been doing that since the early days of the war on terror, didn't you? I have. I've been commenting on these issues for a long time, and I like to think of myself as an anti-war artist at, at the heart of what I do. That's kind of the preeminent ideas I want to get across. So you must have experienced some censorship like we're seeing with this recent case with the NSA coming after this artist that was making fun of their logo. Clearly not infringing on some kind of, as if the NSA could have a copyright on a logo because it's a government organization, but he's certainly not selling these shirts to people who are now pretending to go out and be NSA agents on the yeah. street, right? Well, if, if those are the standards that apply, then they can come after a lot of the work I did, but I have had stuff banned. Um, I did a painting of um, Dick Cheney in, a, in an electric chair, mm -hmm. which I think is just, you know, I mean, <laughs> he is guilty of capital crimes. That's right. Or he's, you know, allegedly guilty of capital crimes. Um, uh, the war crimes that he's... Well, we were just talking before the interview about, yeah. that you, you said there's a, a lawyer who said that every one of the persons who's died... Mr. Boliosi is, is working on a program that, I mean, he's, you know, the guy who prosecuted Charles Manson, he's a famous prosecutor, and he says that according to the law, um, the people who lied us into Iraq are guilty uh, for murder literally a murder charge for every single American soldier that died in Iraq because they sent those kids in there on fraudulent pretexts, and that is a capital crime. How do we get to the situation where the government can lie to people, the government can commit crimes, and they're never held accountable for it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think we just, because we just let them get away with it, you know? We just let this kind of top-down system happen, and, and um, we had trust in our institutions and the bankers and in the lawmakers and in the, you know, the, um, the politicians. And um, we had too much trust in them. You know, we, we weren't skeptical enough. And, and, you know, we get heat. People think like you and I do for being skeptical of government. But I think the very predicament we're in right now is because we weren't skeptical enough. Mm -hmm. And that's really the heart of it. You know, it's... it's um, Question, asking questions is, is not a bad thing. Yeah. That's, that's really the heart of any kind of freedom or any kind of democracy is, we, you know, with transparency and, and question, asking questions. It, this is not a subversive thing. This is part of the, the you know, interest, intrinsic part of the process that needs to be exercised more, and it's not. To paraphrase Patrick Henry, he's essentially said liberty is a jewel, and if anybody comes close to that, you guard that very carefully. You watch everything that they're doing. Because yeah. that's a tremendous temptation. It is like some kind of a precious jewel that they could take because there's a lot of value for them to be able to do anything that they want to yeah. without any restrictions, which is where they are right now. They, they like that. That's always been a major temptation. They understood that. There were men who understood the nature of power. But we have become so naive and so trusting yeah. 
that we don't pay any attention to that. We don't question what they tell us. And it's this it's war against our liberties in an incremental basis. So de Tocqueville said, um, you know, the war against uh, freedom will happen with a million tiny cuts Yes. until one day you wind up and you can't move. And they're all, you know, seemingly well-meaning, you know, well-intentioned things. Well, that makes sense, you know, on some level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at some point you realize you, you can't move. We say Everything that with is illegal. We say that with the Second Amendment. When they used the phrase, when they talked about the First Amendment, they knew that you could come in and you could, you could take away the First Amendment with just a quick law. But they knew that with the Second Amendment, people would fight if they realized <laughs> that was happening, right? So they talked about infringement. Infringement is like you've got a piece of property and somebody gradually moves their fence onto your property a little bit at a time. Yeah. And before you know it, they've got the whole thing because you allow them to move that onto your property and you allow it to stay then it essentially becomes theirs. Yeah. And that's what we've allowed is an infringement on every area. It's not just the Second Amendment. It certainly is the Fourth Amendment. When we look at what's happening with the TSA. Yeah. You've had cartoons about uh, that, I'm sure, uh, illustrations. Well, the TSA is, you know, I, it's kind of <laughs> something that motivates me because it's, just, it's something you have to actually interact with. It's not some abstract concept. Like you see them, you know, you feel them putting their hands on you and, Yes. It's a physical manifestation of the police state that, you know, you kind of block out of your mind. I came in here from uh, Kennedy Airport, and there was three lines. There was one for the naked body scanners. There was one for this new thing, which is they squab your hands hmm. and for explosive residue. Hmm. And then there was the pat down. So you, you had to go down one of these three lines, and, and we wound up going down to this weird swabbing of your hands. Hmm. And... Of course, they're not going to find any residue. They're going to swab millions of people's hands, just like they swab millions and millions of people's, or, you know, check millions of people's shoes, never found one bomb, not mm -hmm. one, zero. That's right. They're going to find zero bomb residue on these people. They might find some guy who has, like, you know, fertilizer on his hand because he's a farmer, probably, you know. And I'm amazed that people don't react to that more viscerally. You know, you, you talk about it. It's not some abstract thing. People see that the NSA yeah. is listening to their phone calls that's not really real for them. Yeah. There was a comedian, Tom Mabe, and he went out and he had a uh, boom mic and he dressed up like a government agent in a black suit with uh, sunglasses and a headset. And he goes out and he holds this boom mic over people who are just having a normal conversation on a park bench. And they immediately get incensed because they realize what an affront that is to their dignity, to their yeah. privacy. And yet it's kind of abstract when people are talking about, oh, they're listening to your phone conversations and they call it metadata. It's like, oh, I don't know what metadata is. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so they allow them to get away with that. But when you go to the TSA and you see them doing this to people, they're doing it to you, they're doing it to children. That's not something, I, it just doesn't make any sense to me that people can tolerate Well, it's that. intimidating. I mean, th that's the thing. Dude. It's like um, when you're there and I was there, you are intimidated. It's a physical presence. It's an intimidation. You know, you're, we were late for our plane and it's like, am I going to make a big stink? Am I going to, you know, be detained for nine hours? It's B.F. Skinner. Yeah. It's positive operant conditioning. You know, you've got something that you want. You want to get on that plane. Yeah. Are you going to cooperate? If you cooperate, you'll be immediately rewarded with access to the plane. Yeah. If you don't, you get negative conditioning, right? <laughs> so that's the way they do it. They offer this carrot to people. It's the same thing he does with dolphins, okay, yeah. or with dogs. It's a great way to train animals, and it works on humans as well. And the name of his book was Beyond Freedom and Dignity. That's what the TSA is about. It's and about it works. Taking. And you know, there's part of you that know it's, it's an affront to your dignity, and, and you know it's an affront to your freedom, and, and you know it's it's not it's just security theater. It's nothing to really uh, save anybody swabbing your hands. Please, it's, it's ridiculous. Like some guy who just you know fused a bomb was going to put his hands out there. It's ridiculous. Right, right. It's idiotic. It's it, it's it's so ridiculous when you actually think about it. It makes no sense. Why would a guy who just made a bomb go and put his hands out? He wouldn't. Yeah, absolutely. Hold that thought right there, Anthony. Well, that's it for tonight. We're out of time, but you can get the second half of this interview tomorrow night. We're going to talk to Anthony Frieda about how he developed his art style, how he woke up politically, and what it's like to work in mainstream media, the kind of pressures that he comes under. You can catch that tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. America is going under classical, hardcore tyranny. 
censorship and persecution of the press and whistleblowers is at an all-time high. Our nation is beginning to mirror the corruption and oppression and persecution that the Soviet Union ladled out against the press and activists. It's beginning to race towards the type of suppression we witnessed under Hitler, Mao, and others. And it's time for the American people to not cower in fear of this. It's time for the American people to get angry, to get focused, and to get aggressive. We see people that post on Facebook that their premiums have gone up under Obamacare having their Facebook accounts deleted or suspended. The same thing on Twitter. We're seeing artists who parody the TSA or the NSA being threatened with arrest, being sued, being fined, having their websites taken down with speech that's clearly protected. My friends, across the board, there is a darkness of intimidation and chilling effect settling in to the United States, but also in Europe. And that's why here at InfoWars, we're striking back with another film contest. We've had more than 15 of these contests. They have reached tens of millions of people. This contest is going to be for $10,000, and you'll have until January 7th to get your videos produced and uploaded to YouTube and two other video platforms. We will then post the entries on InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And this contest is to defend the First Amendment and let these tyrants know that any further attempts to restrict our free speech will only be met with a doubling down of resistance. Here's the contest. You can go to InfoWars.com where we have this video and the rules posted and examples of previous contests that we've had so that it can give you an idea of what the winning entries will be. We're going to have one prize for $10,000. You can do parodies of the TSA or the NSA because the TSA has threatened to arrest anyone making jokes at the airport, something that's clearly unconstitutional and is just a threat. You are also reminded that any inappropriate remarks or jokes concerning security may result in your arrest. We appreciate your cooperation while these measures are in effect. The NSA has gone after people making fun of them, as we just mentioned earlier. So it's important to also lampoon them and let them know that free speech is alive and well. But the winning entry might be a investigative report on the TSA or the NSA. Or you could do a report on both of them. I will watch the videos with my team and pick the $10,000 winner. One winner, $10,000, to be announced in January of 2014. So get going. You've got a little over a month and a half to get your videos produced and to get them out there. And regardless, we all win by promoting the First Amendment, by promoting free expression, and by standing up to these tyrants that are attacking our free speech. Think about how far we've gone, how far we've fallen. What are we going to put up with next? It's time to get past the fear and to have everybody stand up. Sure, they may put us on a list. They may put you on a list. That way we know who the good guys are. Everybody on the list. The bad guys are the people that aren't on the list. It's time to let these tyrants know we're not scared of them and that we are on the offense because the best defense is a strong offense. These people are attacking us and it's time to strike back and let the TSA and the NSA and all the other alphabet agencies that are raping our liberties know we are not their slaves. Reclaim the Constitution, repeal the Patriot Act, and abolish the NSA. Be part of history. Be part of resisting these tyrants. Let your voice be heard. Produce a video today to support free speech in this country before it's extinguished. And finally, I have a message for those collaborating with these tyrants. History is littered with civilizations that have gone along with corruption only to fall and implode. We do not want to let America disintegrate into abject authoritarian oppression. Choose the side of liberty. Admit you've been wrong and support the First Amendment. Don't be like Admiral Yamamoto, the head of the Japanese fleet that attacked Pearl Harbor, who wrote back to the emperor saying, I fear we have awakened a sleeping giant to terrible resolve. Admit 
that the road we're going down is one that leads to rack and ruin. And let's turn this around before America completely collapses into civil war. Because if the globalists think they're going to have some Soviet-style takeover in America, they're gravely mistaken. Oh. <laughs>